only occasionally did we get a nest reoccupied years in sequence, and they were both in the bird size of their So even though the burrow's good and the habitat's good, the owls are dispersing so much. So I'll just, uh, since I've got on that. So if you imagine ecologically, what's the benefit to our burrowing owl? So the prairies are highly variable, right? You get a really good year and a really bad year. You might get a good year in Saskatchewan, a bad year in Alberta for crops. It's the same for burrowing owls. So if you were to plot the abundance of owls from year to year, you get this hilly landscape. A lot of young somewhere, no young somewhere else. So ecologically, in an evolutionary sense, it makes sense the following year, everyone fans out. Because you don't know where the good habitat's going to be. Right? If you came back to where you had good habitat last year, there's a good chance it's going to be bad this year. So it's better that everyone randomly, I mean, I'm anthropomorphizing, but they spread out. So when we think of birds that are uh, have high fidelity, like whooping cranes in the buffalo, that's a very stable environment. You might get slightly drier or slightly wetter, uh, but it's a very stable environment. The fish pop, study them up there, the fish populations, the beetles, the dragonflies are stable from year to year with minor variation. The whooping cranes go back there year after year, exactly the same territory. For the burying owls, it's not the same. It's so variable. Pintail are the same. Pintail are dispersed a lot on the prairies. If the prairies are dry, pintail actually keep going to the boreal forest. But they don't have a good time breeding, but it's not quite staying on the dry. So from an ecological and evolutionary sense, it makes sense that furry birds should spread out every year um, rather than coming back to the area where they were hatched and bred. The fire and the grazing pastures, the pressure would have changed over the landscape continuously. And, and we've noticed at the park here when it had worms, it tends to attract bird owls the following year. So they like grass at a certain height, which is another complication. So well grazed pastures, medium grazed pastures, uh, allow better prey availability. The ability, but you also need the taller grass to breed the mice. So we need that combination. Yeah, they need grazing. So you know the, the grasslands that we do conserve should have a grazer on there, whether it's mice or cattle or something to create those short grass areas where the owls can actually, so you, you need food available, food abundant, but it needs to be available in the short grass for the owls can get from. Okay. Another question. Um, what can ordinary Canadians do to help burrowing owls? Um, well, if you don't own land, um, donate to the Nature Conservancy or <laughs> IHR Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. um, if you're thinking of dying, put them in your will. <laughs> and if you're not thinking of it, make sure you've got a will and make sure if you've got kids to take care of, fair enough. Uh, but donate some of it. Your kids probably don't really need it. They're just going to an extra holiday anyway. <laughs> donate it to uh, conservation groups. Now that you mentioned climate change, I mean, who you knows yeah, climate, yeah. climate change, we're predicting that prairies will advance to the north and it may be some benefit to burying but I mean, there's still prairie for the north. Okay, so obviously everybody wants another glass of wine. Yes. <laughs>